So uh, hello everyone. Thanks for uh, having me here today at ISMB 2023. And today I'll tell you a story about uh, detecting sepsis with machine learning. So sepsis is the world's leading cause of death in hospitals with about 20% of global mortality. Um, global warming might, might overtake that. But the because of this, and especially because of the multi-drug resistant bacteria, which is growing in hospitals, there's a lot of uh, research interest in this area because this amplifies the problem of sepsis. So uh, a slight gear change. Consider the, this Rubik's Cube here. So it's a 3D image. And if you look at something 3D from two different two, uh, 2D angles, you will see that there is a, you get two different data representations. And then each of these two different data representations, they don't actually represent uh, reality. So it's the same with biological experiments. When you try to uh, look at something from with, with one essay, it doesn't give you the full picture. So what we to get a full high resolution resolution picture of sepsis, we need to get to combine many different two D experiments together into a three D data object. And we have done this on a published case study where we took multi omics data from sepsis causing bacteria. So there's two different conditions here. One is uh, a sepsis condition and a non-sepsis condition. And we have four different omics data, including genomics. We have transcriptomics, proteomics, and metabolomics. And what we did is we connected um, functional omics data into with the regulatory omics data blocks. We have we have found different biological molecules that are correlated to each other in the functional omics block. And we then looked at this, investigated this in more detail to get the regulatory omics uh, motifs. So uh, we will look at the functional omics component of this uh, workflow first. In, over here, you can see that there's um, these individual blocks here, are the individual molecules, so each of those individual rectangles, and the different colors represent the different blocks of omics data. The blue and red lines, they show the strong negative and strong positive correlations uh, respectively. And we were able to find correlations between individual biological molecules in our published pipeline. So next, now that we have identified some biological processes as part of the pipeline, we look at the regulatory omics component of this pipeline. Um, over here, you can see that we look at the intergenic regions of the genes of interest, and we've ran the pipeline, and you can see this uh, highlighted region is the represents the region of interest and the intensity of the color represents the, the strength of the score. If When we took a closer look at the data, we found that there is some um, biologically relevant features, for, uh, for example, a Lexay motif, which is, uh, is a known regulatory region in bacteria. So overall, what we found is that the results it matched the previously experimentally validated results. And the main, the key difference between our results and that of the previously published results is that we achieve a single molecule resolution. So whereas the previously published study only achieve a pathway level resolution. And yeah, that's that. And so in, in summary, we were able to connect the, the functional omics uh, block with the regulatory omics block, and we found some features that uh, we can use at a, at a very high resolution to get a molecular fingerprint for of sepsis for potential future diagnosis and uh, detection. We also, um, yeah, and this, yeah, the molecular fingerprint. So in, in summary, um, we overall, we, we were able to achieve, um, yeah, uh, a, we have an end-to-end -end functional omics pipeline, that, a pipeline that combines both functional omics data and regulatory omics data. And we have three key features that we show. First is that we have a data-driven tokenization. And if you look back here, you can see that these motifs here, they are variable length. And this uh, arises from the data naturally. We don't, we don't specify the camera lengths. Second, the approach is annotation free. We don't care what the genes or the molecules are. We just you give it a matrix of abundance values or you give it a FASA file. You can give it protein, protein sequences even if you choose to. And it will just infer that from the data. 
The third uh, loyalty we give is that we have a data-free model comparison. So we can compare uh, models without having to retrain it, on, which is a computationally expensive process on the data. Or, um, or if, if the data is not reproducible or available, as commonly the case of with biological data sets. And for more information, you can find me at my poster. It might be on the floor, but you can find me there. So it's uh, A A99. And the, uh, it's available for download as Conda packages and R packages. Um, thanks for your time.